tip number five. Okay, these are four reasons to use scikit-learn, not pandas, for ML pre-processing. So let me walk through each of these one by one. Um, I will say I'm talking specifically about pre-processing data for machine learning. You know I love pandas, and it still has huge uses for working with data and data exploration, but my point is about machine learning pre-processing, meaning taking raw feature values and making them suitable for machine learning models, okay? So let me briefly unpack these four points as to the case I'm making for scikit-learn. Point number one, you can cross-validate the entire workflow. What does that mean? Well, that means you can create a pipeline of pre-processing and model building, and you can use cross-val score on that pipeline. Um, cross-val score will take in the pipeline and it will do the splitting and pre-processing, but it will do the pre-processing within each fold. It will not do the pre-processing first. That actually produces the most accurate estimates of future performance. If you do the pre-processing yourself, before cross-val score, that leads to data leakage. Instead, you want to create a pipeline of pre-processing and model building and use cross-val score on the pipeline. Okay, point number two, you can grid search model and pre-processing hyperparameters. So grid search is normally used for searching model hyperparameters, like for example, the C value of logistic regression, but you can also use it to search pre-processing hyperparameters, for instance, the imputation method. So how that works is you create a pipeline and then you do a grid search of the pipeline, and I'll show you that in a future tip. Um, and with pandas, you just simply can't build a pipeline, so this functionality is not available. Reason number three, avoids adding new columns to the source data frame. So if you were doing some dummy encoding using pandas, for example, and your the, the column your dummy encoding contains 20 categories, you're going to get 20 new data frame columns. You can do that, but that's super inefficient in terms of space and it makes the data frame harder to explore when you keep adding more and more and more and more columns. Instead, I'm recommending you use Column Transformer, and that allows you to not affect the source data frame. And finally, reason number four, pandas lack separate fit transform steps to prevent data leakage. So as we've talked about, scikit-learn has fit and transform so you can learn something from the training data and apply it to both the training and testing data. It would be extremely complicated in pandas to duplicate this. Of course you can do it, but it would be so much code. I'm thinking 10 times as much code and it would be way more complicated. Pandas is simply not built around a workflow of splitting data, learning something from one piece, and applying it to both pieces, especially if you wanted to do something like cross-validation. This workflow would be absurdly complicated to do in pandas. Okay, so that's my brief unpacking of these four points. The point of all of this is I'm making the case now for if you are doing machine learning, you are best served by learning how to do your pre-processing in scikit-learn and not in pandas.